Hello, my little rain clouds. I've been wanting to talk about apologies. Apologies are really important things. They help us a lot in navigating life and the complexities of our relationships, making us able to resolve conflicts, repair relationships that have been damaged by us making a mistake, hurting someone, wronging someone, behaving inappropriately in some way. They can help to restore our integrity and our reputation. They can help us to resolve feelings of guilt and shame, remorse. They can help other people to resolve their feelings of anger, frustration, sadness, upset, hurt, all sorts of things. And so it's really important that we can apologize effectively. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know how to. They're apologizing in ways that don't really work. So I wanted to talk about how to apologize effectively. But let's first start by talking about what an apology is. An apology is a sincere, genuine statement with two key factors. Number one, it acknowledges your actions and the negative consequences that they had for someone else. And it expresses remorse for those actions and the consequences that followed. It's really important that an apology is genuine sincere and heartfelt, that you really do mean it when you say it. It's also important that you're saying it for the right reasons. An apology isn't a magic spell that you cast to make a problem disappear, to stop someone being upset or mad at you. It's not something that you do to get yourself out of trouble or to avoid being in trouble. It's not something that you should do just because you have to. It's not something to manipulate someone else, to guilt them or shame them into doing something, to make yourself look better or make the other person look worse. It's not about trying to manipulate them into apologizing or admitting wrongdoing. It's not something that you use to get someone to do something. And it should not be used in an argument, said angrily. It's something that you should genuinely mean and say it only when necessary. I've seen a lot of people who have anxiety disorders and people who have been in abusive relationships or have known people with anger issues, and they tend to apologize profusely way too much. And they'll apologize too easily at the drop of a hat. And they'll apologize preemptively. They'll apologize before someone is upset, before they've expressed they've been hurt or wronged, that they're angry or whatever else. These people will apologize preemptively because they're scared or worried that someone is upset with them and that that is a bad thing, that that is something they can't handle because they're going to be rejected or abandoned or hurt, that they're going to be abused, things like that. And it's understandable why they would do that, but it doesn't tend to work. The vast majority of the time, you don't need to apologize to protect yourself because someone isn't necessarily that angry. They're not as upset as you might think. The consequences aren't as bad as you might think. But also, if someone is upset or angry or whatever else, typically they don't want a superficial apology. They don't want just a simple, I'm sorry, or an I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. That's not enough. For minor mistakes or accidents, just a simple I'm sorry can be fine. 
if you bump into somebody walking down a hallway, and I'm sorry, is fine there. But if it's something that's more complex, more nuanced, more personal, if it's something bigger than that, then typically you need a bigger apology. And an apology tends to have five basic components to it. And for some people, different parts of the apology may be more important. There's an author, Gary Chapman, who talks about apology languages, and different people value different parts of apologies more, or they've learned to speak certain apology languages. But nevertheless, it's probably best just to have all five of those components in your apology. So, let's talk about those parts. The first thing is the expression of remorse. Typically, we start off by saying, I'm sorry. Maybe we say, I apologize, but typically we say, I'm sorry. And usually, that's a really important part of the apology. If you try and apologize without saying, I'm sorry, a lot of the time people won't really accept that or feel that. So, start it off with an I'm sorry. But recognize that's not enough. That's not apology over, unless it was a very minor thing. But let's say it wasn't a minor thing. Let's say it was something serious, something fairly big. Then we need to expand on that. We need to start off by saying, I'm sorry. And then we keep going. Really important point. And this is something that bugs me personally, but something that bothers a lot of other people too, I'm sure, is saying, I'm sorry if. Don't do that. I'm sorry if is not a proper apology. An apology shouldn't be conditional or hypothetical. If you don't know the consequences of your actions, maybe don't apologize yet. Maybe talk to the person, ask them how it affected them. But saying, I'm sorry if I upset you, I don't really like that. Because, to me at least, it's really important that the other person understands and acknowledges how I'm feeling. And they need to know that as a definitive thing. They need to know, oh, you are upset, you are hurt or embarrassed or whatever it is. If they don't know, it doesn't feel that genuine to me. If you don't fully understand how your actions affected me, you can't express remorse for them fully. So, understand how someone feels before you apologize. You can potentially understand it by putting yourself in their shoes and imagining, well, if that had happened to me, how would I feel? But you don't know 100% how that person's going to feel. Because their life might be very different to yours, and the effects of your actions might have a very different context for them. It might really touch on a sensitive area for them and affect them in a way that you don't understand. So, you might need to do some listening first. You might need to ask, how do you feel? How did my actions affect you? It's okay to do that. And indeed, some people may need to express to you even if you were a mind reader, even if you knew exactly how they felt, they might still need to say it for themselves. Because their, their anger or their hurt tells them, hey, say something. Express how you feel. So, try and make sure that you know how your actions affected someone before you try and apologize. But let's say that it's a fairly cut and dry situation that you said something that embarrassed someone. Then you say, I'm sorry that I embarrassed you yesterday by saying this thing. I recognize that it was wrong of me to say that thing. I shouldn't have done it, and it hurt you. And I'm really sorry for that. I feel a lot of remorse for that. I regret that I did that. Expressing your remorse is a really important part of an apology. Even if you try and do all the other steps, if you don't show 
that you're sorry, that you feel bad for what you did, it doesn't tend to ring true. And people won't necessarily be able to accept your apology and forgive you. So, expressing remorse is important. It's also important to try and apologize in a timely fashion. Once you've realized that you've hurt someone or that someone's expressed that they've been hurt, then apologize as soon as you can. Don't leave it. Let it fester. Let them feel worse. That's not going to help. Acknowledging how they feel and apologizing promptly is important. I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit because the next part of apologizing is admitting responsibility. It's acknowledging your actions and how they affected someone else, how they made them feel, and taking responsibility for that. Saying, I caused you to feel this way by doing what I did. And that was wrong. The thing I did was wrong, and it was wrong because of this. I understand why it was wrong. I understand how it affected you. And for that, I have remorse. Once you do that, things can start to heal. But an apology isn't just about the past. It's also about the future. An important part of an apology is a promise to change. To say, I know that what I did was wrong, and I won't do it again. This is a really important thing. If you hurt someone, and you apologize, and then you keep doing the same thing that hurt them, that's not a proper apology. And if you keep saying one thing and doing another, people aren't going to trust you. They aren't going to take you seriously. And you won't look like you have integrity. So, it's important to make that promise that you won't repeat the action that caused that hurt or upset. Now, obviously change is difficult. And sometimes we may not feel confident to be able to promise that we'll never do that thing again. So, we can at least say, I'm going to try. I want not to do that thing again. I'm going to try and be better at it. I'm going to try and do this thing or that thing and change my behavior, change the way that I respond to things or react to things. I'm going to try my best and change. And you can say, hey, I'm going to try and not do this anymore, but if I do it, call me out on it. Tell me that I'm doing it. Make me realize so that I can change. It's important not to put all of the responsibility on that person, but you can say, hey, if you see me doing this thing, call me out on it. Let me know because it's important to me that I'm aware of my actions and how they affect you. So that's a really important part of an apology. Now, this may be enough for some people, but other people want a couple of other things in their apologies, and often it's good to include these two. Another aspect of an apology is to make amends, to take action to try and make it right, and what exactly that looks like will depend on the situation. Sometimes they may not want anything. Maybe nothing can really be done to make it right, and that's okay. Sometimes just the offer is enough. But other times, it could be a financial gesture, or it could be devoting your time or your energy, some other kind of resource, to doing something for them. Obviously, if what you've done has some sort of a financial penalty or a damage uh, to that person, like say you walked past their table and knocked over their drink, then you spilled the drink, it's made a mess. You should offer to clean it up. That would be an appropriate way to try and make amends. There is also the financial cost of the drink, so you might say, can I buy you another drink to make it up to you? That is also an appropriate way to try and make amends. If you spilled the drink all over their clothes and it's a pretty bad spill, or they're pretty fancy clothes, you might offer to pay for their dry cleaning. That's pretty reasonable too. They may refuse or reject that, and that's okay. But again, even just the offer can be enough to make amends. 
it might not have anything to do with the specific situation that you're in. You could make amends by doing a favor for them, running an errand, or doing something nice with them, taking them out to dinner, or having a nice evening with them. Maybe you could um, buy them a little gift, or something like that. There may also be a gesture that you can make to restore face to that person if you embarrass them publicly in front of your co-workers. Then maybe you want to apologize publicly in front of the co-workers if that person is comfortable with that. Whatever it is that you do to make amends, if you need to do anything at all, it is important to recognize that just because you feel bad about something doesn't mean you should let those feelings distort what is reasonable to do. If you feel really bad, you might be tempted to go overboard, make some grand gesture, maybe buy them a gift that is way, way, way too expensive or elaborate for what was really just a minor transgression. So make sure that what you're doing is appropriate. And also, it's not something that you wouldn't do ordinarily. If it's something that violates your values or your standards, if it's something that you wouldn't be comfortable doing, then don't do it. It's important not to do anything you don't consent to doing. Don't let them manipulate you or coerce you to do anything. So, for instance, sex is not appropriate to use as a way to make amends with someone. Going out on a date with someone who you have absolutely no interest in is not okay. That's not something that you would be willing to do ordinarily, and the fact that you're trying to apologize and make amends to someone does not mean that you should do it now. Retain your standards, retain your right to say no, and make sure that the gesture is appropriate, that it's proportional to whatever it is that happened. The last step of an apology is asking forgiveness. To some people this may not be important, to others it might be very important. Asking for forgiveness shows that you care about that person and how they feel, that you value the way that they see you, and so you kind of elevate the other person and lower yourself a little bit and give them some degree of power over that. You're saying, I value how you feel, and I value your forgiveness. And it's okay if you're being apologized to not to forgive someone. If you're not ready to, if you don't accept their apology, or you just need some time, it's okay not to forgive someone. And likewise, if you're apologizing, it's okay if someone doesn't forgive you. That's all right. That person may need time to heal, and that's okay. Don't rush them through the process, and don't make this about you, because it's about their feelings. You can just say, for example, you might not be ready to forgive me yet, and I understand how that feels. I don't want to rush you. I just want to say how sorry I am, and I'm going to give you plenty of time to see that I am changing my behavior. Something like that. It puts the ball in their court. They can decide if they forgive you or not. If they need some time to think about it, that's okay. Depends on the situation. Depends on how they feel. But if you have offered an effective apology, then at the very least, hopefully you will feel better. You will feel less guilty. That you can move on and have some sense of closure. That you've done the right thing. And hopefully, they can feel that way too. Hopefully, they can work through any feelings of hurt or anger and feel better about things. One last thing that I want to talk about as well. You'll notice I didn't say anything about explaining what happened. This is a really important thing. A lot of the time when people apologize, particularly if they have anxiety, they will explain what happened, and they will almost always say, I didn't mean to. I would advise not saying that, because an apology isn't really about what was happening or what you were trying to do. It's not really about you. It's about the other person, the person who has been hurt. It doesn't matter what your intentions were. What matters is 
the results of your actions. And so acknowledging, hey, I did this thing and it hurt you in this way. That's an important part of an apology. But saying, oh, look, I didn't mean to hurt you. I was trying to do this and I'm a good person because of this, 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 this. It doesn't tend to work. Often when we say those kinds of things, they end up being kind of excuses and they weaken our apology. They make it seem like it's not our fault and that we're not taking responsibility for it. And sometimes, yeah, we may not be fully at fault and that's okay. But acknowledging, hey, I did this and this is how it made you feel. That's a really important part of an apology. If someone expresses that they don't understand why or that they want to understand why, or, you know, they ask what your intentions were, sure, you can talk about that. But just by default, I wouldn't say, hey, I meant to do this. I wasn't trying to do that. If you're really concerned that they misunderstand, if they seem to think that you were deliberately trying to hurt them, then sure, you can say, I'm so sorry that I did this and made you feel this way. That wasn't my intention, but nevertheless, it made you feel this way, and I regret that. I was trying to do this, but I obviously was misguided or made a mistake, and for that, I apologize. I've learned from this. I understand the consequences of my actions and how they affected you, and I will make every effort to not act that way and not affect you in that way in the future. Just make sure that your focus is on the other person and their feelings. A lot of the time, people won't think that you were deliberately trying to hurt them or upset them, that you were a malicious person. They'll probably assume you just didn't understand, that you weren't aware of how it was affecting them. So you probably don't really need to explain to say, I didn't mean to do this. It's not really about what you meant to do. You definitely don't need to make excuses for your behavior, saying that you were tired or stressed out or that something was happening at a really bad time. Take responsibility for your actions and how they affected someone else. That's what an apology is meant to be about. But bearing that in mind, it's also important not to beat yourself up too much not to put too much responsibility on yourself, not to highlight your negative qualities, not to denigrate yourself and make yourself out to be terrible or pathetic or anything like that. Don't wallow in self-pity or flagellate yourself. Don't make yourself out to be this terrible bad guy. Don't shift the focus onto you and overemphasize how bad you feel. You can express a healthy amount of regret and remorse, but if it's focusing so much on you, then it can become kind of narcissistic or self-focused. It can be more about trying to manipulate them into absolving you, to say, oh, no, no, it's fine, or you didn't really do it that much, or it wasn't that bad. Then that takes away from the other person. It turns it around and forces them to comfort you. So make sure that you're taking on a healthy, appropriate amount of responsibility and expressing a healthy amount of remorse, but that you're not overdoing it, that you're not focusing too much on how terrible you are. Again, it's about acknowledging the effects of your actions and promising to change, not beating yourself up. That's how an apology works. Try and hit those five things. You express remorse, take responsibility, promise to change, make amends, ask for forgiveness. You should be fine. Even if the other person doesn't accept your apology, doesn't forgive you, maybe they hold a grudge, maybe they have unresolved issues, that's okay. But you did what you could. And as with all things, communication is important. If something seems to be going wrong or your apology isn't enough, talk to them and try and understand it. Ask why, ask what's happening, how they feel. Make sure that you understand them and hopefully they can then understand you as well. And that way you'll improve the relationship. Ultimately, relationships can grow and thrive 
because of a breach and repair, because of a, a mistake or an upset, and then an apology. It helps you to heal and grow and become closer, trust each other more. You understand each other more. So it can be a really helpful thing in the long term. But understandably, it is potentially pretty uncomfortable and unpleasant to be in that position. But you can get through it. You can apologize. You can restore the dignity of someone else. You can restore your own integrity and feel good about that. Just remember, apologize only when you need to and then do it properly. You don't need a thousand I'm sorry's. You don't need to preempt. You don't need to protect yourself. All you need to do is understand how someone else feels and how your actions affected them, and then to try and make it right. It may seem complex, big, and scary, but it's actually pretty simple and pretty easy. You just need practice. You can do it. I believe in you.